happy Wednesday, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Transportation and Logistics Podcast, powered by Atlanta Dispatch and Humble Bee Enterprises. I am very excited to be here with a special guest. We have Carrie Jablonski, CEO of Trucker Tools. And before we begin, I did just want to give a shout out to those Georgia Bulldogs um, for becoming the first back-to-back national champions in the playoff era. You know, it was a very quick game. Carrie, did you get an opportunity to watch the game? Oh, yeah, we watched the whole thing. And it was, I mean, it was just a smackdown by UGA. But it was, <laughs> as, a, as a neutral, I'm actually a Notre Dame fan. Um, so just as a neutral third-party viewer, it was just a, I mean, it was just a boring game compared to uh, the New Year's Eve. No doubt about who the best team in football, college football is. So good for, good for UGA. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. It was a, uh, there was one funny part where it was halftime and, you know, Nick Saban was up there. And then the gentleman to Nick Saban's uh, left said that Georgia football has taken over college football the last couple of years. And Nick Saban's face, it just dropped. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I, I, I hate it for him, but uh, I am, I am from Georgia. Uh, and I, I'm I'm very happy uh, that they got that W. It's doing wonders for the program, and it's been a, you know, I think that this is some some good notoriety for a lot of hard work um, that's been going into that program for the, you know, the past decade that I've been tuning in. So definitely, I know. Um, yeah, do you think Georgia is the new Alabama, or is that too? It's too soon to say that. I think it's too soon to say it, but. I feel like there is a different level of football culture in the uh, SEC altogether. And, you know, if you do have, I'm not going to say the swag or the sauce right now, but it it is, it's about who you're recruiting. You know, it's it's about those blue chip players and who they're interested in going to. And for a very long time, Alabama was the creme de la creme. So uh, with Georgia getting uh, these accolades, I'm pretty sure they're going to continue to keep the eye of those top prospects. So, you know, it might be it might be a, a new a new era, the UGA era. Yeah, well, I'm here for it. Anyone but Alabama. So <laughs> <laughs> that is hilarious. Well, I love it. And look, thank you again for joining us here on the Transportation and Logistics podcast. Um, look. Question. I kind of asked this question for my guests. Uh, did you go to school? Did you go to college with the expectation of being in supply chain? You know, how did you get into logistics? Yeah, it's a great question. I definitely did not. And I'd be curious what percentage of your guests actually say yes. And I have to imagine it's pretty small. Uh, it feels small. like most people <laughs> in the industry are just like, I never planned to be here, but here I am. And I love it. So that's definitely, definitely my experience. So um, how did I get into logistics? So a couple years after um, college, I got a job with Uber, um, which was kind of my foray into logistics. Um, I wasn't on the freight side of things. I, I started on the um, U.S. operations for ride sharing team. So I was working on kind of launching new markets, managing supply and demand, um, getting operations running at airports across the Southeast U.S. and um, that was kind of my first taste of logistics, obviously a far cry from, you know, freight and, and everything we're doing now, but that was my introduction um, and spent some time with Uber, uh, both on the ride sharing and then on the Uber Eats side, had a number of colleagues who moved over to Uber Freight or who even left Uber to go work at other freight tech companies. Um, and it was really starting to pique my interest and the stars aligned when um, I was also, or I, after I, after I went to, uh, worked at Uber, I got my MBA, um, at Northwestern and that's when I met, um, the kind of parent company of trucker tools, Alpine software group. That's a private equity firm that invests in, um, a number of tech companies. Um, and they had just, uh, acquired trucker tools and we're looking for some um, operators to come in and uh, run the business. That's kind of the model they run. They acquire businesses, founder led businesses where the founder is looking to step out of management, um, day to day responsibilities and bring in um, new operators. So the stars really aligned for me. Um, I was not planning to move into the freight space, but I've been talking to ASG was really excited about what they were doing with their acquisitions. Um, and the kind of the culture of the companies that they were buying and building. And, um, you know, known from my time at Uber that there was a ton of potential in freight from just really observing Uber freight uh, from, from the sidelines. 
and uh, join join the company. And uh, it's been a it's been a blast so far. I, I joined Trucker Tools about a year and a half ago, and um, one of my favorite parts of the job has been really diving headfirst into the industry and, and spending as much time as possible with customers, partners, prospects, um, getting out into the market, getting into offices, getting out in the field. It's been a blast. Oh, awesome. Awesome. And I, I love the way, you know, things just naturally happen for you. You know, yeah. that's it. You're right. The percentage of individuals who say they actually plan to be in supply chain uh, is very, very slim. It's, it's not very many. And uh, I, even I, I, I kind of I kind of skipped into this bad boy, not expecting it. You know, if you would have asked me in college, what would I be doing? I thought I was going to be an IT consultant, you know, for a yeah. while. You know, you and I both, I mean, I worked at Deloitte. I saw that that was also oh, something that you had no in your, your back. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and I wasn't there very long uh, before I got my first chance to do something a little bit different. So, you know, I, I, the stars have been aligning and taking me in, in different places for a very long time. But uh, question, did you did you get a chance to go to uh, Deloitte University? Oh, I did. Yeah, I went to DU probably my first month. That was my first job right after college. I was an analyst uh, in the federal consulting practice of Deloitte. So kind of similar to you, I thought I was going to be, uh, I studied economics and government undergrad. So I thought I was going to be, you know, doing something on kind of the public sector side of things. wasn't totally sure what. Um, so Freight is definitely a far cry from that. But I did go to DU, spent a week there for training, and that is a phenomenal facility. 100 percent it was uh i think when i when i joined it was brand new it was okay. brand spanking new and i did get that opportunity to go out to texas uh and you know live that life for just a little bit um yeah. so yeah I'm, I'm happy that you also got that experience um so look i know that you also had some very interesting things uh with uber and i'm not going to ask you to go too far into it but like I said, the stars did align. It took me international, and I see that you also have some international experience. For the the folks who are listening in, the young professional, maybe even the college student, uh, what would you say if they got an opportunity uh, to work abroad, where you know they weren't going to be housed out of the the United States? Um, yeah. Do you have any advice for them? I would say jump at that opportunity as fast as you can. Um, I think living abroad was, it was certainly one of the most impactful experiences I've had in my entire life. Um, I lived briefly in Indonesia and then I lived in Mexico City for about a year and a half, both with Uber and both experiences just pushed me so far out of my comfort zone in so many ways um, and really opened my eyes. I mean, it sounds obvious to other parts of the world, but growing up, you know, in the US really spending my entire life here. Um, it was, I, I gained so much kind of cultural humility, so much perspective on the potential of other parts of the world from a, from a business perspective, made incredible friendships um, with folks from totally different backgrounds that I had. And it, it really just, I think, um, you know, if you're thinking about, you know, professionally, how do you develop when you work abroad? I think it gives you, it, it challenges you to learn how to work with and influence really different groups of people. Um, and that's a skill that even when you come back to the US and repatriate, is absolutely applicable um, whenever you're working with groups of people uh, who have inevitably different backgrounds. So um, I couldn't recommend it more as a, as a great way to spend some of your time, especially um, when you're younger. And it's bottom line, I think just a ton of fun too. Uh, I, I had a blast the entire oh, time awesome. abroad. I couldn't say that any better. Um, I, and I'm happy that you've had that experience because I talk about it quite frequently uh, with individuals, but uh, to see you also have that experience and to just ask you for your um, your candid thoughts, I'm very happy. Uh, I couldn't say it any better. And just to, you know, for the people who are also listening in, because the, the audience is very diverse, we have people who are, you know, as senior as CEOs of huge freight brokerages to yep. those who are just interested um, in, you know, maybe they want to get into the industry. Um, what does Trucker Tools do? And, you yeah. know, um, how does it support supply chain? Absolutely. So Trucker Tools is what we call a carrier relationship management platform. So we do a couple of core things. Um, 
all in service of helping freight brokerages grow their carrier network and build lo long-standing, enduring digital relationships with those carriers. So brokers access uh, the Trucker Tools platform. Um, sorry, brokers access carriers through our, our Trucker Tools platform, um, primarily through our mobile app, um, which has been downloaded millions of times across North America, and it offers drivers tools for life on the road, you know, fuel optimizer, routing optimizer, document scanner. Um, but the, the two real primary ways that brokers interact with carriers through our app are through our loads marketplace and through our load tracking platform. So um, brokers can, on, on the loads marketplace side, use trucker tools to interact with carriers digitally, digitize that tribal knowledge at brokerages, um, those manual operations around finding, sourcing, and booking carriers, and actually transition the relationships they have with those carriers from kind of analog, manual to digital to um, build more efficiency into the operations. And then on the load tracking side, they can also um, move from track and trace calls over the phone, having a manual team conducting and spending you know hours and hours a week on tracking and tracing loads to capturing that same and higher levels of visibility via our mobile app and our ELD integrations. So we really think of us, ourselves as as a tool set for broker, brokers to digitize their to digitize their their business and compete more effectively against those non digital native companies um, that they've got. You know, we've got entering the brokerage business, the brokerage space constantly. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, thank you for that that breakdown. And I mean, our our um, fleets of vehicles, and uh, you know, those fleet owners are they also your customers, or would you say you're more you know, you're partial to the the, bro the brokerages. Yeah, absolutely. So we really think of ourselves as a two-sided marketplace. Um, you know, we've got the freight brokers who are using our SaaS platform and, and really strong uh, versions that are integrated into dozens of TMSs to access our carrier network, uh, post loads, track, track freight. But then none of that would be possible without the like millions of uh, drivers we have using our mobile app every single day. Um, so we definitely consider those carriers our customer. We've really focused on the small, uh, the small fleets owner operators. That's been our core focus for as long as the company's been around. Trucker Tools started back in 2009, actually. Um, that's when our founder uh, started the business and was really building a lifestyle app for drivers out on the road to help those small fleet owner operators, you know, more easily navigate. Um, life living out on the road, help them find loads, help them find fuel, help them kind of navigate the ins and outs of um, life as an over the road trucker. And that's that's really been um, central to our platform ever since. You know, we've developed this whole brokerage platform and we're really focused on them as customers, but none of that would be possible without the massive and super engaged carrier network we have. Um, so we do think of them as a customer. We don't, we don't sell anything actually. That's kind of a core tenant of trucker tools as well. Everything on the carrier side is free. Um, so our, our app is free, um, the kind of features we have within the app, the access to the load marketplace, booking capabilities, ability to bid and negotiate and book loads, all totally free. Um, in the future, we're hoping to expand our, um, some of our carrier offerings even more to just continue to provide tools that are, are valuable to those uh, small fleets owner operators out there. Okay, perfect, perfect. I, I do want to get into that a little bit more. Uh, a little bit later in the conversation, but I'm happy uh, you did bring that up. Uh, there is one thing that kind of stuck out to my mind is this phrase of uh, predictive freight matching capabilities. Yeah. What is that? How, how does that work? Absolutely. So um, we consider ourselves a digital or kind of one of our core capabilities is as a digital freight matching platform. So that means we are going to help brokers match the right truck with the right load at the right time. We know that brokers and carriers are swimming in data and data and data and emails and phone calls and messages and options all the time. So what we've done on the Trucker Tools platform is actually build a way to synthesize all that data through our really strong TMS integrations and then be able to effectively match kind of those open um, to be covered loads from the broker side to great options on the carrier side based on the information you know carriers provide us about where they live which lanes they like to run um down to the interactions they're having with uh loads on our app we're able to understand you know we know this carrier is searching for loads out of houston heading to 
uh, Minneapolis every Tuesday. So, you know, if we know a broker has a load to be covered and that carrier is in their network, um, similar to that lane at that same time, we're going to recommend that that match as a really, really strong match to the broker. And then we've got a number of channels where brokers can actually reach out to carriers um, to make sure that they're getting, you know, cutting through the noise and getting those right loads in front of them. Um, kind of the most obvious one of those is through our mobile app. You know, we've got the, the load marketplace in there where we're recommending loads to carriers. And then we've also got emails that are going out twice daily um, from brokers via the Trucker Tools platform to those carriers that have interacted with loads on our platform that um, help them understand what good matches for them can be. And that's where we see a ton of booking activity is instead of, you know, kind of from a traditional load board perspective where carriers are going and just looking at the most recently posted load by a broker and brokers are, you know, trying to constantly just post and post and post to have the most relevant load at the top. We're actually, you know, approaching this from a very different perspective. And we're saying we've got really strong data. We've got a powerful algorithm that we've been working on for years and years where we can um, help you as a carrier cut through the noise and receive kind of inbound mail that has already looked at all of the options out there and gives you the best recommendations, which, you know, then leads to higher success for the carrier because they're you know, able to book a, book a load digitally. They don't need to worry about any sort of human interaction um, or any sort of, you know, my email went unanswered, the phone didn't, wasn't, wasn't picked up. Um, and then the broker also wins because they're making sure that they're getting their freight covered in a timely manner and um, they're empowering their sales reps, um, carrier sales reps, their brokers to do more um, with less as they're just taking advantage of uh, the massive amounts of data we've aggregated on carrier activity. Nice, nice, nice. See, I entered the industry as an entrepreneur um, during the golden age of trucking. So rates were, you know, out of this world thing. Business was yep. booming. Everybody I talked to was doing great. And uh, yep. you know, the tune has changed uh, so much over the past uh, 15 months or so. How, how have you, how have your clients been over the past 12 months? You know, have you heard any uh, horror stories? Have you heard anything that, you know, some, some standout things people uh, were, were living good? You know, how, how have your customers handled this over the past year, let's say? Yeah, we absolutely um, know and feel every day that the market has changed drastically from where it was 15 months ago, as you mentioned. Um, and we've got brokers of all sizes on the platform. Um, you know, we, we work with top five brokerages. We work with mom and pops who are just getting started booking, you know, 10, 15 loads a month. So we kind of see that across the board. And I think a couple of things stand out agnostic of brokerage size. Um, first is that although, you know, while, while rates have dropped, um, while the market looks looser than it was 15 months ago, um, there is still a massive, massive desire to digitize business and to automate operations and to be able to do more with less. You know, if headcount isn't something that we're going to be able to grow, brokers are having to get a little bit scrappier with the way they're using digital tools. So they are eager to see a quick return on investment in terms of core metrics like loads booked per rep. Um, so that's something that's really exciting for us in a platform like ours, because what we think of, um, we think of ourselves as a tool to unlock efficiencies within a brokerage, um, help you know brokers find carriers more quickly, help them reuse more carriers, help them engage carriers digitally and really stay top of mind, nurturing those relationships. So, um, you know, even though, of course, you know, as you know, costs become more top of mind, we might not be able to grow headcount quite as fast at these brokerages. We're still seeing huge appetite for digital tools that can um, drive digital bookings, digital activity, um, because they allow carrier or carrier sales reps to frankly just book more loads with the you know, kind of the same amount of time, same number of folks. Um, and then on the flip side too, an, another major trend that's really shifted quite, quite drastically um, and quite quickly is just the uh, renewed focus on freight uh, visibility and load tracking. Um, you know, when, when the market was really tight from a capacity perspective a year and a half ago, we absolutely um, saw load tracking um, compliance be less and less important. It was more about, you know, if I'm a broker, I just want to make sure this load is covered. Um, that's good enough for the shipper. They they don't need to, you know, it, it'll be great if I can track and provide visibility into the load. That's always going to be value add and, and really make me stand out. But the most important thing is when there's so much freight and rates are so high, we just got to move this freight as fast as possible, make sure the thing gets there. Whereas now um, where capacity is a lot looser. Uh, we're seeing shippers, you know, I think everyone's heard about the revenge of the shipper. We're seeing mm -hmm. shippers really put that in, into action by 
uh, reintroducing really rigorous scorecarding and making sure that they are, um, the brokers they're working with are ones who are able to give total visibility, really consistent updates. Um, and that's, that's exciting for us as a business because we have, um, you know, really been a pioneer in load tracking for, for years now. Um, and what makes us stand out from a load tracking perspective is that um, we were not, you know, we're, we started as a mobile app. So we've got a really, really strong um, level of engagement among small owners, operators, um, small fleets who might not have adopted ELD tracking or integrated their ELDs. Um, like we've seen with another number of larger visibility providers. Um, but at the same time, uh, we've actually spent, you know, the last 15 months while the market has been changing, focusing on building out our ELD network. So I think we're actually very well positioned um, given, given the change in the market to be able to deliver strong compliance scores, both from a mobile app perspective because of our large engaged user base and not from an ELD perspective, because that's been a huge focus of ours as we knew this, this moment would come. Freight, freight is notoriously boom and bust. Um, so just like we're talking about how visibility is super important now, you know, it will be into the future as it just becomes more and more over table stake. We also know the market's going to tighten up eventually again. And, you know, we're going to see rates go back up. We're going to see things change over the next several years. It always happens. Yes, ma'am. I agree. I mean, it, does, it is cyclical. Uh, apparently, this cycle that we're in right now, or at least this portion of a cycle is different than any time in the in the past. Um, so it's interesting uh, to see some of the analysts uh, make their predictions, um, you know, especially when they're, they've are they been wrong. <laughs> but yeah. but right. as of recently, Freightways did just release a, a article. It might have been earlier this week where an analyst said that they believe that by the time, by the end of 2023, rates are going to be up 15%. So I'm excited about that just for, you know, That's my great. role in the industry as a, independent dispatch agency i own atlanta dispatch so my if my clients are doing better uh they can scale you know they don't have to struggle to pay bills and you know that's just better for everybody when motor carriers are yep. able to be comfortable and you know look to grow their companies versus just surviving so um why do you think it why is it important in your mind from where you are uh that rates uh go back up yeah, um, definitely important to us because of that massive carrier base we have. You know, again, we've we've really focused on serving the small fleet, the owner operator, the mom and pop trucker, and they're the ones who are living and dying most by the spot market. They probably got a higher percentage of their book of business um, booked through the spot market rather than securing contracts with shippers or with brokerages. So we think it's just critical that um, they're able to, you know, cover their costs, make sure that they're running an efficient business. And that's, again, why we have so many tools on our platform um, available freely to all of those small fleets out there. Um, something we actually just did, speaking of FreightWaves, uh, we integrated with FreightWaves Sonar so that we've made all, um, all of that lane-by-lane -lane track information, track data available for free to any carrier on the Trucker Tools platform who has uh, fewer than 50 assets. And that's just kind of acting on our commitment and our promise to those small fleets to make sure that we are enabling them to make the best decisions possible to weather the storm and get through um, what is going to be a bumpy, bumpy ride for a couple of months um, and come out stronger on the other side um, in, a, in, a, in a better place. So they're able to uh, take advantage of, of the rates when they do eventually go back up. You know, I have to say kudos on that one. And I, I want to know how did you how did you guys get that deal done? Because I I partner with Freightwave Sonar team every single week here on this platform to uh, talk about you know the places that small uh, you know the mom and pop uh, trucking companies should where they should position their trucks to take advantage of the market conditions. How did you guys get that deal? Because I think that is amazing. That's a huge value add to um, owner operators and small fleet owners. Yeah, we have a great relationship with Freight Waves. Um, they've been a huge partner for us kind of across the board as we've grown and scaled our own business um, where we're always working with them on kind of different thought leadership pieces for Freight Waves. We're actively contributing um, kind of our insights on the market to to them whenever we can be helpful um, because we you know they're such a great uh, resource for everyone in the industry. Um, so this really came out of kind of our mutual desire to continue to 
democratize access to data in, in the space. And we thought there's no better way to do that um, than get into the hands of the, the drivers on the road who are using tools like Sharker Tools to make decisions every single day. We thought it would, you know, um, data is, is empowerment for drivers and this will help them make better decisions out there. And ultimately a rising tide lifts all boats. If we can get the market, the freight market moving more efficiently, that's gonna be good for all of us. So um, it was a really natural, natural conversation and it's, it's been great so far. Oh, I love it. Uh, I didn't know that. I mean, well, I, I, I researched it and I was going to talk about it tonight, but the yeah. fact that you guys are doing it, uh, I think it really says a lot that you're making it available for free um, because it's, for a small fleet owner to get that uh, individually is it, pretty pricey. So the fact that they can use your your app and, uh, you know, leverage that data, those analytics, that's amazing. And that kind of... That kind of leads me to what the topic of this conversation is, which is the fact that you guys have decided to incentivize the driver themselves, um, you know, versus what I guess a normal industry, uh, the industry norm would be, no, you better do this or else you guys have taken the different approach. You're saying, hey, because you have done this in such a nice and responsible fashion, here you go. Why did you guys decide to go the incentivization, if I said that right, <laughs> <laughs> versus the, the industry norm? Yeah, so uh, just to give everyone some background, uh, we just launched our driver loyalty program, which we can go into d more detail on, but it's, it's a program where brokerages are able to um, – reward drivers, drivers specifically, not carriers. And I think that's an important distinction as well um, for digital activity uh, on the Trucker Tools platform that they engage in, whether that's tracking a load um, consistently through the duration um, of the line haul, or if it's uh, you know booking a load digitally through a Book It Now uh, load marketplace platform on the app, um, they're able to actually uh, reward these drivers with a, a new currency we've called Trucker Points that are uh, points available, just like an airline loyalty or credit card loyalty program for redemption um, at any number of uh, major U.S. retailers via gift card. So we're really excited about the program. And the reason why we decided to develop it was that, honestly, just talking to our customers, we had heard time and time again from brokers of all sizes um, how much they wanted to start a loyalty program because developing strong carrier relationships was the number one thing they could be doing for their business to make sure that they were in a position to succeed. Onboarding new drivers, working you know, to vet compliance, making sure that drivers understand kind of what they're signing up for, what the requirements look like for any number of loads is costly. It's, it's time consuming. Um, and it's it's something that can slow a brokerage down. So I think it really this really came you know obviously we're we're a driver first platform we love our owner operators, um, but this really came from our customers our broker customers saying like hey we would love to figure out a way to reward drivers um, for engaging with us digitally and for for you know doing the things we're asking of them we because brokers can try you know they they can use the stick approach all they want they can withhold pay um, they can you know choose to not work with with carriers or drivers again, but um, that's really the tried and true way. And it's, it's only gotten them so far. And especially um, either, you know, in a loose market when tracking is of utmost importance or in a tight market when just finding capacity is of utmost importance. Um, there are a ton of options out there for, for carriers. Um, and they're gonna go with the brokers who are treating them kind of with the most respect and dignity. And um, we thought we could be of great service to our broker customers by building a platform that allowed them to do that at scale without having to invest tons of time and resources. And we realized that it would also make you know great business sense for us as we're trying to help drivers understand the benefits of digitizing their business by booking online, by using mobile tracking, by integrating their ELDs to track. Um, we just thought it would be a great kind of for all three parties in that equation um, to be motivated to take action rather than penalized for, for not doing anything. Right, right. And if a brokerage was interested in participating in these service, I mean, in these offerings, um, what would they need to do? How would they contact you or what would that com uh, that conversation sound like? Yeah, they really just need to, to reach out to anyone on the Trucker Tools team. Um, it's as simple as that. I would I would I love hearing from folks in the industry. I love um, connecting with with anyone um, freight related. 
whether you're a customer or prospect, heard of us, never heard of us. So you can feel free to shoot me an email at kjablonski at truckertools.com or reach out to me on LinkedIn. Um, but all, all we need um, to get a brokerage up and running on our loyalty program is to get you on, um, active on the Trucker Tools platform. So that's either by um, sending your freight to post on our platform for digital booking or to um, track, you know, create load tracks and track with us via our mobile app or ELD programs. Um, we get, it's very simple. There's no integration required to actually get this loyalty program going on top of the uh the the products you're already working with us on so it's super plug and play super customizable we're able to play with the point values that we're um, assigning to different activities like load tracking or digital booking so that's totally customized to whatever that brokerage is trying to do whether it's drive strong compliance or book more great um without any human interaction okay have you gotten any uh responses like since this thing went live from the actual drivers have you heard of any you know pretty fun and cool things that people have been able to do with their their points yeah so we've got great feedback from from the driver community so far on this um it's it's been really well received and um we've got you know hundreds of thousands of drivers who have already um, or sorry, thousands of drivers who are already opted into our program and are earning uh, points every single day. I think the most common thing drivers are doing right now is honestly just building up um, a point bank for themselves so that they're, they're able to, you know, kind of go all in. It's kind of like when you're at the, like, you know, an arcade as a kid and you're earning tickets. Do you want to spend it immediately on um, one of the smaller prizes? Or do you really want to save up for like the 20,000 ticket teddy bear? Uh, so we are seeing a lot of drivers really just try to try to save up their points. But we're hearing already that um, folks are using it, you know, for coffee out on the road at fuel stations to, to grab a quick snack. Um, and it really just is a, is a compliment to the, to the lifestyle that they're living. Oh no, that is awesome. I'm I'm happy to hear it. And yeah, I've been I've definitely been that person. I've actually always been that person <laughs> to save the ticket <laughs> to, to build up for that one big thing versus uh spending along the way. And yeah. uh, you you kind of mentioned some of the other things, some of the other value adds uh a driver could get from utilizing your application. But I did want to just take something that I uh, read something I got directly from your website, and uh, the reason I want to do this is because it's so so many things that can be done that I have to say it. All right, so it says Trucker Tools app helps you find way scales, parking, rest areas, truck stops, grocery stores, truck washes, restaurants, medical facilities, loads and backhauls, repair shops, and more. You also can use the Trucker Tools Driver app to digitally track loads for brokers, trip plan, calculate your fuel spend, purchase cargo insurance, and, um, dang, my computer <laughs> went to sleep. <laughs> I think All that's right, a pretty purchase, good list, though. Yeah. Right, right. Purchase cargo insurance, book loads, and calculate your axle weights. So this sounds like a powerhouse application uh you guys can't really have any competitors that are offering all these things can you there are definitely other applications out there that offer tools for life on the road um trucker path is a you know great app um there's there's a couple others out there but i think the core difference is that we we don't have any sort of paywall um you know we are we are there for the owner operator um so folks can use our app for free um, to access all those tools that you just rattled off. And I think another core difference is that we are the leading in mobile app, mobile, mobile tracking compliance for brokerages. And that's really because of um, what you just rattled off there. We've got such a high, highly engaged um, carrier user base that tracking is really just like a, oh yeah, I'm already using tracker tools to find my, you know, my next way station. Of course I'm going to have tracking on. Um, it's such a, like a kind of a, you know, you're not even thinking about it as a driver turning that on because it's, it's such second nature. You're already using the app. So I think that's that's another thing that really makes us stand out is that we've been able to crack that code of mobile app tracking compliance. Um, and it's just a, that is a massive, massive value add for our brokers. Mm, awesome. Awesome. Look, I'm going to get to something very different by the time I get to the, this next question. OK, <laughs> this <laughs> great. Let's do different. it. All right. Well, look. Uh, if you didn't know, I'm pretty sure you did, but if you didn't know, the FMCSA just legitimized independent dispatch services, okay? And yep. uh, yeah, and the industry, it made the industry, the industry made it known that 
dispatch services added a ton of value to these um, these fleet owners, these owner operators, and they're going to be here to stay. I mean, are you guys ever partnering up with uh, dispatch services? Because it sounds like uh, being able to utilize your platform and, uh, you know, for all of the, the different motor carriers that a dispatcher is dispatching for, it might, it might help. Like, is that something that you guys see on the horizon? Yeah. So we actually already have, um, we we're definitely already working with a number of dispatchers, um, via our portal. So we've got what we call a carrier portal. Um, you know, it's, we call it, we call that kind of just informally, um, not just for carriers, but, um, have a number of dispatchers working out of that. And that portal, it's web-based, um, as opposed to an application, um, which is more aimed at drivers and our, our web portal allows dispatchers to actually, um, you know, access the wealth of data we have on the freight on the Trucker Tools platform and find um, good matches for their carriers, for their drivers out there and um, book that freight digitally as well. Um, and we've done that completely uh, free as free of charge as well. Again, we're just in, we're, we're interested in booking as much freight as possible over, over the platform for our brokers. So if we're able to provide a valuable channel for dispatchers to access the freight we have, um, we're all for it. So it's definitely something we've we've built out already and, and have plans to expand in the future. Awesome. Yeah, it sounds like I'm going to be onboarding myself. <laughs> I mean, Great. Yeah, that, that sounds like a, a huge value add, uh, you know, to be able to have a free tool that anybody and everybody can download from an app store and it gives live tracking and all these other benefits, uh, why not? Um, that, yeah. that, sounds, that sounds amazing. And, uh, you know, so, you know, with all those things that you guys are able to provide already, um, we, we recently had OIDA on here onto the platform and uh, they broke it down that basically anyone can be the catalyst that ignites the change they want to see. And, uh, you know, with the infrastructure bill playing out, do you guys, you know, from Trucker Tools, do you guys have any specific things that you are particularly interested in seeing, um, you know, with that infrastructure bill? Um, yeah, so we're, I mean, we're just really, one of our, our major uh, things we care about is driver safety. So we're, we're excited about the um, improvements that are going to be made to our nation's highway system. Um, that's something we're excited about because, you know, we've got hundreds of thousands of drivers out there on the road every day, and we know safety is paramount to, to their carrier um, operations, to brokers, and we're excited for the improvements um, that hopefully will come as a result of this massive amount of spending to improve all things safety, um, all things safety related for the drivers out on the road. Oh, I love it. I mean, that that is the number one thing. I mean, I actually, uh, I just released, I just published a book. I just published a book. And no way. It, yeah, yeah. I published a book. This is my first time saying it publicly. <laughs> but Congratulations. Just, That's thank huge. You. I should be interviewing you. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. Uh, it, it, it is because of the FMCSA legitimizing dispatch services. I know that there are going to be a good amount of new entrants who want yep. to do that. So this book is a baseline, a guide to say, hey, these are the bare minimums that you need to know before you start making decisions as a dispatcher. And, um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting it's interesting the fact that uh, that right there just got released. I'm not even going to lie to you. I got so excited and flustered by saying that that I lost my train of thought. <laughs> oh, not a problem. That is so exciting. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm super excited about it. Um, you know, What's it called? You got to plug it. I, I'm going to read it. All right. All right. It's called The Dispatcher's Guide to the Galaxy Fundamentals of Dispatching it. Motor Carriers. Yep, that's it. Oh, that's it. That is super close oh wow you're already on barnes and noble i just googled oh yeah oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're there man we're there so oh, i'm excited man. about that bad boy and uh do you guys plan on adding any other service offerings uh so much so like maybe factoring because it seems like that yeah. would be like the the next step to all the things that you're doing absolutely um yeah that is is that is definitely something that um we're we're exploring um 
you know, kind of the right way to get into that. It would absolutely be a kind of a natural extension of the Trucker Tools platform. Um, again, we're focused on helping those small carriers really kickstart their business and be able to operate independently out on the road. Um, and working capital via factoring is obviously kind of the, the lifeblood of, of those businesses. So we're definitely exploring it right now. Um, and it's something we get asked constantly about from customers. So uh can't share too many details right now but we we certainly have some plans up our sleeve that and we're exploring would love to talk to folks out there um who are interested in that um just as we're really trying to to finalize and formalize our plans to move into financial services okay nice nice i think it's an awesome uh, value add you know i've interviewed a, a couple folks who've been able to successfully implement that into uh, their business and what they're able to offer uh, motor carriers. Um, so, you know, the sky's the limit once you, once you get it there, once you get it out there and, and, and structured and exactly how you guys want it. Uh, I think that it's going to, it's going to do numbers for you guys. So, um, yeah, you know, with where we are now, I know that we've talked a lot about trucker tools and, you know, I, I, I know that you're the CEO. You might have some things to share that I wasn't able to talk about or bring up. Is there anything that you wanted to mention in this conversation now? Because, uh, you know, I feel like I was able to uh, go through my questions pretty quickly. Great. Well, yeah, I think I think we touched on it um, before, but I, I, the, the big thing that we're focusing on this year is how do we um, – build a comprehensive visibility strategy for brokers and for carriers so that it works for them um, for both parties. We think you know visibility really needs to be a partnership between brokers and carriers. So a huge part of that has been focusing on building out our ELD network over the last year or so um, because we know that's it's really an emerging preference among many brokers but also many carriers so that they don't need to worry about um, mobile app tracking. Um, so that's that just given the, the kind of the macroeconomic climate, like we were talking about, that's something we're very excited about this year and just invite anyone who's listening, who's, um, you know, thinking about visibility and, and knows it's of utmost importance in a climate and an economy like this um, would love to have a conversation because I think we are really positioning ourselves as a kind of the, the single um, app and ELD provider that can, can get, um, folks super duper compliant and we're excited about that this year. Um, and that's, that's really kind of the, the focus for us over the next couple of months. In addition to, of course, continuing to deliver on our promise to our owner operators to have a, a phenomenal mobile app for them to engage with life on the road and continuing to, um, build just the most elegant, um, efficient digital booking experience, uh, in freight. Oh, awesome. 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 Well, I'm here to support it, especially now that I've been able to learn more myself about Trucker Tools. Um, you know, of course, I've been hearing the name uh, for for a long time, but to be able to get this level of detail, uh, I'm definitely going to be an advocate moving forward. So, um, uh, I want, yeah, I just want to say thank you so much for joining me on, on, the, on the Transportation Logistics Clubhouse. I truly appreciate it. Oh, well, thank you so much for having me. It's It's been a pleasure, and I'm so excited to read The Dispatcher's Guide to the Galaxy. Oh, thank you, thank I think you. I think you the cleverest book name I've seen in 2023 so far. <laughs> well, I appreciate that, madam. I truly do. And, uh, you know, if there's ever anything that I can do, uh, just feel free to reach out. I'm, I'm always happy to help. And, uh, you know, without, with that being said, uh, everybody appreciate the support. We're well on the way to 30,000 members here in the Transportation and Logistics Clubhouse. Uh, tune in on Monday as we partner up with FreightWave Sonar team to tell you where you should position your trust to take advantage of the market. Um, and tune in next Wednesday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I believe we're going to be here with my brother Jay from My Carrier Package. So, uh, tune in, tune in. I, I, I can't wait to talk to you and see you guys then. Uh, Carrie, you have a blessed evening, man. Oh, I appreciate it. You too, Jory. Thank you so, so much for having me on. Anytime. All right. I'll talk to you later. Yes, ma'am. Bye. Peace.